whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. Time Puzzle Crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. The park named after Panfilov's 28 Guardsmen is perhaps the most iconic place of the southern capital. The uniqueness of this park lies in the fact that it appeared almost simultaneously with the foundation of the city of Virne, on the site of the old cemetery. The park's name has changed several times. Before the revolution, it was called Church Park, Cathedral Park, and even was called Pushkin Park during the Soviet period. And the park has changed several names until the period of 1942, when it received its present name in honor of the soldiers of the 316th Rifle Division, formed in Almaty and heroically defending Moscow from the Nazis. In the park, away from the bustle of the city center, the cathedral has been standing for more than a hundred years. The solemn services are committed underneath its painted vaults. The bell is rung at the appointed time, and from the top of the cathedral to the park of its surroundings, it summons worshippers to service, and announces particularly the important missing parts. Now, this architectural monument is one of the most famous landmarks of the city. However, until present days, the grim tales are alive, talking about secret underground passageways and relics which are buried near the cathedral. Early Sunday morning in 1929, the inhabitants of the western village were staring anxiously at the road to the Orthodox Church. It was quiet and windless. Services had been stopped, but usually on the weekends, the chimes came from the church belfry. The voice of the main bell, Blagovist, was so loud that it could be heard even in the neighboring village of Sofia. Today, we call it Talgar which is located at the distance of more than 20 miles from the city. But there was no sound on this Sunday. The villagers didn't know that Semerechinskaya Monastery was robbed. And only when people came to church did they begin to cry in horror. The floor was covered with wood debris and pieces of cloth and moldings. All the church's utensils were destroyed and torn apart, including icons and a library, experiencing the most severe humiliation. The bell Blagovest laid in the churchyard near the temple. This new bell was cast from donations of the Almaty citizens, and it was installed in the bell tower in 2001. Old bells disappeared after those tragic events. It is known for certain that it was decided to send them to one of the factories for recasting. The bells were removed, but they had never been brought to the belfry. Today, the relics of the Ascension Cathedral are considered to be lost forever. However, there is one secret of this story, which everyone tries to avoid. There are rumors that the rector of the church commanded to hide all the treasures in underground passageways, which supposedly were situated underneath the cathedral. Perhaps they are still there, and we are going to uncover that mystery. Rumors of the underground tunnels in the park have been exciting the imagination of Almaty citizens for a long time. They could be treated with skepticism, unless some strange facts make us think upon it. In 1974, the workers involved in the demolition of the bishop's house at the corner of Soviet and Proletarian Street found the underpass. They saw a fairly wide corridor. It was expanded to form a room where workers saw a table, a bench, a gun, and an empty cup on the table. And a skeleton was seated at the bench, leaning to the wall.
Workers called the managers of the corresponding departments and the entrance to the cave was destroyed. Time would have erased the story if it hadn't been told from one person to another by the Almaty old timers. However, some experts deny the existence of the underground tunnels and consider this story as fiction. Others, however, believe that the first underground tunnels appeared simultaneously with the foundation of the city. Thus, information about them reached us mainly in the form of legends. Perhaps only in the temple we can solve the mystery of the missing bells and the lost icons. We asked a person for whom the cathedral was truly a matter of life to comment on this story. There is no documentation left approving that the passageways existed. Of course, there are opponents and advocates of this theory. However, according to the examples in the Russian Empire, such underground passageways were quite common for this type of provincial city in that early period of the 20th century. It is a historically known fact that the Russian Empire tried very hard to turn the Semirichi into the southern province. And that's why there were mass migrations of Russian peasants and Cossack families. At first, the fortification was built, which soon became surrounded by villages and developed infrastructure. On the 11th of April, 1867, the fortification was transformed into a city called Verney. There is an opinion that in those days, the first tunnels had appeared. However, to find the true answer, we have to know when and who built the cathedral, which treasures were hidden in the temple, and how did they appear in the church? See more. Who was the author of this ingenious construction? Borisoglevsky had a company like Dome. Amazing engineering solutions. It is 100% Zinkov's merit. The disaster in Verney in 1887. A single story building collapsed. And this giant 40 meter high building didn't even stagger. What secret does the great Orthodox shrine hide? Only a few people know the church originally was called Turkestan Cathedral because of the well-known historical fact that its construction in Pushkin Park was started in 1904 within Pisius Vinogradov, Bishop of Turkestan and Tashkent. In fact, the first attempt to build a temple in Verni was implemented in 1868. But something went wrong, as if the higher powers opposed the construction of the temple. Building committees and dioceses were trying to agree on the draft of the cathedral and the estimated cost of construction. The parties could not come to an agreement. And eventually, the cathedral was built of stone and brick. But it didn't last long. Like the wrath of God, another devastating earthquake happened in Verne in 1887. The largest earthquake in history and geology, called Verni Disaster, occurred in the early morning of the 28th of May, 1887. Not a single brick building was left in the city with a population of about 30,000 inhabitants. One of the witnesses of the catastrophe wrote that the city was like hell indeed. Incessant thunder was heard from the huge crack, stunning and terrifying thunder. The mountains over Verni were cracked and muted hums were being heard from the mountains. Trees were swinging and people lost their balance. Houses collapsed, making a peculiar sound from the slumping bricks, like piles of rustled old dry leaves. The large amount of buildings were turned into dust. However, some of the houses, especially the Cossacks' wooden huts, survived. Studies have shown that stone buildings of Verni were harmed many times stronger than wood, and it was required to take into account during the making of the new project of the cathedral. In 1904, it was decided to resume the construction of the temple, and the building designers were local architects, Konstantin Arkadyevich Borisoglebsky and Sergei Konstantinovich Traparevsky. General construction supervision was made by the regional engineer, Andrei Pavlovich Zenkov. 
Colonel Zenkov was strictly controlling the quality of construction and materials. And it would be much more convenient if he was involved in the construction. When he started working, he slightly changed the project. But Zaglebsky had Kapani like dome, and Zenkov changed it onto the onion shape, and he extended the bell tower for eight and a half fathoms. Consequently, the appearance of the cathedral changed. Therefore, I think that it would be right to consider them as co authors. I think so. I adhere to the view that it doesn't matter who the architect is, because without Zenkov, the cathedral would not have been built. As astonishing engineering solutions, it is 100% Zenkov's merit. Especially the commission of the best engineers who studied the effects of the earthquake in 1887 in Verne has been developed. The rules for construction of state-owned buildings and public places in the area of Semerechensk and other areas prone to earthquakes. Within these rules, engineer Andrei Zenkov built a new cathedral. And nature will test its strength again soon. In January of 1911, there was another strong earthquake, which again destroyed half of the rebuilt city. But the building of Ascension Cathedral passed the test. There is a toy, roly-poly, not one in Russian culture. It has a very heavy bottom and a light top, and it doesn't matter how that toy is tilted, it always returns to a vertical position. And it is the same with the cathedral. The extremely heavy cement foundation stands in a large pit, which is full of sand. The supporting beams in the foundation go from column to column through cement. And there are holes in the floor so that the beams are not rotted. The earthquake destroyed all the other churches with the bells. The bells fell, losing support. Some fell on the roof and others on the ground. The bells in Ascension Cathedral hadn't even moved and they were not disturbed. The whole construction is very flexible. It doesn't break. It bends very easily in all directions. And it doesn't crack. It doesn't break in any way. This is a very, very great idea. This is a real invention. Many citizens give a special, mystical, even divine sense of stability to the Ascension Cathedral in all subsequent numerous earthquakes and hurricanes happening in the city for the last hundred years. Perhaps the hand of the Lord guarded the temple, but now we know that it is thanks to talent and genius of the engineering solutions of the architect Zenkov. This beautiful building stands for more than a century, and it continues to keep its secrets, which we will now try to uncover. The Ascension Cathedral is a unique monument of wooden architecture, the second tallest wooden building in the world. It is 41 and a half meters high from the ground to the ball in the bell tower. The crowns of the wall and the roof rafters are made of trunks of exposed Tian Shan fir trees. According to the legend, not a single nail was used in the construction of the building. However, according to Zenkov's report, 8.2 pounds of nails were consumed. But it is true that the main beams are bound not with nails, but with movable staples. They use staples, bolts, and long metal rods. You can see them. However, nails weren't used in the construction of the building at all. It's true. It is really true. It's not because this cathedral is unique, but because they are not used anywhere else. And on the contrary, plaster work cannot be performed without nails. It requires nails. Such twofold legend, you can interpret it both ways. During the construction of the main temple in the city of Verne, materials for construction and finishing, as well as the finished products, were brought from different regions of the Russian Empire. The bells of the cathedral were brought from the city of Gatchina of Petersburg province 
and the widely known Lavrov's Bronze Cast Factory. There are letters of the owner of the factory, Lavrov, and the secretariat of Gregory, the Bishop of Turkestan and Tashkent. In one of the letters, he asked what inscriptions should be cast on the two of the eight major bells. According to the response from Verni, the largest bell, Blagovest, should be decorated with the inscription, it was cast at Gechina factory of Lavrov for Turkestan Cathedral with pious Emperor Alexander III and Gregory, Bishop of Turkestan and Tashkent in 1894. It weighs 249 poods and 17 pounds. In 1907, for the first time, the ringing of the Blagovest called the faithful to prayer, heralding the start of their new life in the walls of the Orthodox shrine. This is a new milestone of the history of Ascension Cathedral. However, fate prepared new troubles and trials for the church, which has revived after the terrible earthquake. Destruction and robbery of the temples in Kazakhstan, as well as across the country, began with the advent of Soviet power. The policy of industrialization of the country, proclaimed in 1927, required the development of ferrous and non-ferrous metallurgy. Their slogan was, the bells to the country's industrialization fund. In 1927, by the orders of the people's commissaires, the adherents of the new governments tried to remove the crosses and domes of cathedrals. But an accident happened, which appeared to many of them as a warning from heaven. One of the workers who was climbing on top of a shrine of the temple fell and died. Just because of that, the Orthodox crosses were showing off for the rest of the socialist era. However, the fact did not stop the fatal revolutionary barbarians. Crosses were left, but fate didn't spare the tower bells. They were removed. Just in order to avoid damage to the roof of the cathedral bells, they were not dropped, as in many other churches. They were removed on winches. The building suffered the fate of most of the churches in those troubled times. In the 30s, it was decided to place radio stations in the bell towers of the cathedral, and later to organize Republican museums inside the walls of the Orthodox cathedral. The story of the bells of the cathedral turned into a real adventure, worthy of a literary novel or a movie. When the Bolsheviks took off the cathedral strategic reserve of non-ferrous metals that weighed four tons, it later was near the temple as an abandoned cargo for a year. Indeed, breaking is not building. There were no copper cast factories in Almaty, and they tried to break the bell, but if you look closely, it can be seen as the photographs of those times say that they tried to drill it. Apparently, they tried hard to split it. However, they did not succeed. They could only bury it somewhere in order to remove the bell from the territory. Now our question is, where? Alexander Grodevich Voronov, the ethnographer, managed to collect the most complete information about lost relics. He spent more than a year in the central archives of Kazakhstan, and he is probably the best expert of the history of the old town. I read somewhere that these bells were buried near the cathedral. However, there are documents approving that these bells were passed to someone who took the bells and put a signature on these documents. These documents describe the process of the cathedral in 1929 when everything was exported. It describes everything that was passed to the museum or to other organizations. It is said that the copper utensils and bells were transferred to Rudmetaltorg. The listed property accepted the representative of Rudmetaltorg, Zitkin. Thousands of articles in the Soviet newspapers of the 20s and 30s victoriously declared the achievements of the Soviet powers in the fight against religious obscurantism, ending in the same way that the church bells were compensated and handed over to Rudmetaltor. This organization is engaged in recycling metal bells throughout the Soviet Union, which is confirmed by archival documents. 
Representatives of Rudmetal Tort used cars, or more often cartridges, to deliver descended bells and their fragments to the next railway station. And by the railways, they were delivered to the casting factories of the country. There were no such enterprises in Almaty those years. Therefore, these bells laid on the ground as a mute reproach to infidelity and barbarism, like wounded giants beside the walls of the temple. <laughs> I must say that they were lying until April, where they were taken and loaded onto carts, which were drawn by 12 horses, as the documents say. They left in the direction to Bishkek. Then everyone was forced to keep their secrets of the final destination point of the bells. They were carried to Tashkent, because we did not have casting factories, which were built only in the 1940s which means that there were no place that they could be melted down. Since it was spring, there was a load of mud on the roads. There was no asphalt on the Kordai Pass. And I met a man, he was already 85 years old in 1998. He told us that he was one of the people who took the bells away. And they didn't even manage to pass through Kordai. The ground was slipping under their feet and the carts with the bells got stuck in the mud. There were several carts, so they decided to bury the bells near Kordai Pass. This version of the fate of the bells of Ascension Cathedral seems most reliable. Documentary evidence of the transfer of the church bells to Rudmetal Torg makes the assumption that the bells were buried in the park meaninglessly. And the testimony of this 85-year-old man must have been true. After all, people don't lie before the face of death and God. And now it is known that the bell was taken away. The pass is large. Where are they buried? There is a hypothetical metal detector study from space. This is a very expensive study. Even if we will be able to find the bells, I think that the Lord will open their location. And if such a miracle does happen, everyone would consider it to be a gift from God. The voice of Blagovest was kept silent for half a century after those revolutionary events in the country. And it is unlikely that we will hear it again. Another unique decoration of Ascension Cathedral was amazing in its beauty, the three-tiered iconostasis with gilded carvings. The further fate of the relic would have remained unknown unless the evidence of the man who knew exactly where the icons are now. In the following episode, we return to the story of the semi-mythical underground passage of the cathedral to try to uncover the rest of the puzzle that these majestic buildings are keeping. Watch in our next episode. Another missing relic of the Ascension Cathedral. There are 16 layers of paint. It has an incredibly rich painting, which means that the cloth of this picture seems to be like it's real. What do the passages beneath the cathedral hide? And do they really exist? There were no passages. No, it cannot be true. There is no information about the underground passages in these documents. Boromov is right. What terrible discovery did the restorers make in Ascension Cathedral? There was a table, a large table, and there was a man dressed up like a monk at the table. Watch our program. Do not miss Lost Relics of the Orthodox Shrines in the next Time Puzzle.